So welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now answering question eight, part D, from the June 2023 P4 International A Level at Excel. Um, this is a pure mathematics P4 paper, and this is the last part of the last question on this paper. I've answered A to C on a different video because it was getting a bit long and this is kind of like a different topic slightly so I decided to split them into two parts. So here we're told about the region R which is shown shaded in figure 2. It's bounded by the curve C and which has this equation which we were told about in the first parts of the question. The line L which we had to show its equation is this. We already shown its equation is this and the x-axis so this is the region that's kind of like um, enclosed by these three things this line this curve and the, and the x-axis using algebraic integration find the exact volume of the solid of revolution formed when the region r is rotated two pi radians about the x-axis so this shaded region is going to be basically rotated all the way around the x-axis to form some sort of weird type of cone with a bit of a you know spherical thing at the bottom a hemispherical type of shape at the bottom okay of it so it's going to be something like a, a three-dimensional shape okay it's going to come out of the page rotate around the x-axis okay and um, go all the way back through the page underneath uh, like behind it and back up again to here so it's going to go through one revolution around the x-axis wrapping around the x-axis you could say all right so now how do we deal with a question like that? Well, there are two distinct kind of, um, e you know, areas here, like two distinct equations here for these two parts. So you've got the line and the curve which meet at this point here. So we can we need to split this into two parts. We can let's call this part A and let's call this part B. So each of them will have their own volume, which can be worked out separately. For A, I'm going to use, for of course, integration and i'm going to use a principle that we should know about volumes of revolution where you take a small thin strip of the curve okay really thought a small thin strip of the curve and you you make it so thin that it's almost like a a, a rectangle okay it's so thin it's like a rectangle um you know very very thin strip Okay, so I'm just exaggerating the size of the strip there. And that strip is then rotated around the x-axis, okay, to form a small cylinder. So when you rotate it around the x-axis, you end up with a kind of cylindrical shape that looks something like this. And here's the x-axis that it's wrapping around, right? So you have a small little width of, I mean, like you can say the height of the cylinder is a small width and the radius of the cylinder is like the y coordinate of the point okay on the curve that you're at okay so this is like the radius of the cylinder that's y okay so that's the radius and that's like the height of the cylinder we know the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h so in this case the volume of this cylinder would be pi the radius would be y so y squared h would be dx okay so that's how you find the volume of that's tiny little cylinder. Now, if you were add, to add all the cylinders from this point to that point together, okay, <clears throat> you would find the volume of the whole shape from there to there. <clears throat> so that's what the integration, the integration means the sum of, that's what that, the integral sign actually is an S, which has been elongated, the sum of all of those, in this case, volumes between this point and this point. So this is like, um, this is, where you know the x the two x values let's call this x1 and x2 on the x-axis from the beginning to the end of the, that particular section you have pi times y squared dx so that, that is the volume of <coughs> revolution of a sh um, you know in a area around the x-axis so you take the equation in y you square it you multiply it by pi and you integrate between those limits with respect to x and that will give you the volume of revolution okay so that's you know that's for for area a for area b we could do the same thing we could find the equation in terms of y so you'd have 15 minus 3x over 5 and you could put 5 pi y squared 
the x between these two points where it hits the x-axis and this point here okay now we know these we, we know these points this is the point um five over two this is the point two we know these points this way this point we can find we can find where that line hits the x-axis and we can do the same thing or we can think about this because it's like a straight line we can think about if you were to rotate this shape this triangle all the way around it will form like a cone that part will form like a cone so it will, it will be something like this it will form like a cone all right this is the x-axis okay so that would be like the base of the cone the x coordinate the y coordinate of p and the height of the cone would be the distance between here and here <coughs> and therefore we can find the volume of that separately and add it to the volume of this so let's start off with the volume of the part a let's start off with the volume of part a so you have the volume equals i like to write the constants outside but don't forget the constant don't forget the pi don't forget the pi very important okay so you got pi y squared dx between the two x values the two x values are these two points here now we already worked out that that's where x equals 2 and that's where x equals 5 over 2 okay now we're not going to use these but I'll just write them down for now so that's 2 and 5 over 2 now if we had the equation of this in terms of y which we could do if we try to rearrange it but that's going to make life more difficult for us then we could use these limits and we could find what y squared is in terms of x okay so we'd have to make it, find the cartesian equation by combining them together and then integrate we'll get the correct area or the correct volume in, um, but what we're going to do is we're going to use the fact that we have these parametric equations and we're going to solve this parametrically okay so you're going to use a kind of like a form of what's called the the chain rule okay so we're going to have y squared dx dt dt now everything's going to be in terms of t the integral pi times the integral of y squared dx dt dt All right so everything now has to be in terms of t the y squared the dx dt and the limits now the limits we know this is where t equals one and this is where t equals two so we have two and one all right so that's fine now we've got to find what y squared is well we know let me just bring these down here so we can deal with them over here in, in sight okay so we need to know what y squared is so we can say the volume of revolution of um, part a is going to be pi times the integral. don't forget the pi it's a very very common to forget the pi you've got y squared so it's going to be t minus one over t squared times dx dt so we know x is equal to t plus t to the power of minus one i think we already did this in the earlier part but it's no harm doing it again that's one minus t power of minus two so we can say dx dt is equal to one minus one over t squared i think it's easier to use it in this form here because i think this will be easier if we write this as all separate terms that's dt and our limits are one and two okay so now let's try to get this in a way that we can integrate it so i'm going to just expand i don't think there's any other way to deal with this i think we can just expand okay so let's go ahead and do that so what we'll get here if we expand so the volume of revolution of a is pi times we have to expand so this expanded will give us t squared then we have to multiply these together and then multiply by two so that's going to be minus one times two which is minus two and plus one over t squared times one minus one over t squared with respect to t so let's continue and simplify this a bit more so we're ready to integrate so we have pi we have one and two that's going to be t squared and t squared times minus 1 over t squared is minus 1 minus 2 times 1 is minus 2 and then we're going to have minus 2 times minus 1 over t squared that's plus 2 over t squared so we multiply this by this and this by that this by this and this by that now we're left with this one so you have plus 1 over t squared and minus 1 over t to the power 4 now let's before we start integrating let's just sim simplify by combining some of the like terms 
again don't forget the pi the pi sometimes disappears so you have t squared minus 3 plus 3 and I will write it as t to the power of minus 2 to get it ready and minus t to the power of minus 4 I've just got it I've just written those together and then wrote, wrote them with the t on top so that we're ready to start um, integrating okay we're, we're, we're ready to start integrating now we can integrate so the volume of revolution of a is pi times once we start integrating the brackets the the integral sign disappears and it becomes a square bracket ready for the limits so we're going to add one to the power divide by the new power this will gain a t add one to the power divide by the new power minus and add one to the power divide by the new power be very careful when you're adding one to a negative number it's like minus four becomes a minus three not minus five don't don't make that mistake the limits are two and one so let's uh, simplify this a little bit before we take it to the other page and get it a bit more we'll put the values in there so this is t cubed minus three over t minus now this is three so that's three t this is three over t three over t the three doesn't go down with the t the minus one is only for the t you see that plus and minus becomes minus three is on the numerator and t is now in the denominator and here this is a minus and minus becomes plus you're going to have on top one over three t cubed in this case the three was already down there okay that's two and that's one so we're going to take this and we're going to continue over here so now let's carry on putting the values in now so the volume of revolution of a is pi times so we're going to put two in here that's two cubed which is eight over three minus three times two which is i'll just put the values in which is six minus three over two plus 1 over 3 times 8 which is 24 minus 1 into there gives you 1 third minus 3 times 1 which is 3 minus 3 over 1 which is also 3 plus 1 over 3 okay so let's work out what this gives you um, should we do it by hand or should we do it by calculator let's have a look if we make that into 24 yeah let's just do it by calculator getting a bit lazy all right so now let's have a look we have 8 over 3 minus 6 minus 3 over 2 plus 1 over 24 and we've got to subtract from this we have 1 third minus 3 minus 3 which is minus 6 plus another one third okay what does that give us 13 over 24 that's 13 over 24 so we can say that the volume of revolution of a is 13 over 24 pi um, cubic units units cubed now we've got to deal with the column okay so i'm going to um think about what we have here and i'll take it over to the other side in a minute so we need to know where does this line hit the x-axis okay let me try and get that sorted out and put it on the other side Just give me a second okay so now what we're going to do is we've we've already got this um kind of like understanding of how this second part part b okay is like a cone it's a cone shape so the volume of a cone is given by a third times pi r squared h that's the volume of a cone in this case this length here is going to be the radius okay so that is going to be the y coordinate of p so we have v equals a third times pi r squared h so our r is going to be the y coordinate of p which is 3 over 2 and our h is going to be the distance between these two points so this point here already we know is where x equals 2 
And this point is where the graph hits the x-axis. Uh, so when 3x plus 5y equals 15, when does it hit the x-axis? When y equals 0. So put y equals 0, I have 3x equals 15, x equals 15 over 3, which is 5. So that's the point 5, and that's the point. This point here is actually not 2, this point here is actually um, 5 over 2, which is 2.5. So this distance is 2.5, okay? So the height of the cone is basically 2.5, which is 5 over 2. So we can say the volume of the part B, which is a cone, is a third times pi times R squared, which is 3 over 2 squared times H, which is 5 over 2. And that will tell you the second volume, which we add to the first volume. And we've got the answer. So this is going to be, let's have a look. You have um, 1 over 3 times um, 3 over 2 squared. It's going to be 9 over 4. But anyway, I'll just put it in the calculator. Times uh, 5 over 2. Okay, that gives us 15 over 8. So 15 over 8 pi units cubed. Therefore, the volume in total is going to be 13 over 24 pi plus 15 over 8 pi. Let's put this under one um, denominator. So you have 13 over 24 pi plus, this is going to be over 24 pi. So that's going to be 58 times 3, that's 45. 8 times 3 is 24, 15 times 3 is 45. So that's 45 plus 13 which is going to be 58 over 24 pi, when in the simplest terms, if you divide both of them by 2, okay, you're going to get something over 12. That's going to be 58. It's going to be 20, 29 over 12 pi units cubed. And there is the answer to this very long last part, last part of the question. I don't know how many students actually got a chance to finish it, although there was only eight questions on the page, paper, I guess. So maybe it was, um, all right, it was a long, long last question. Um, anyway, so there's the answer to part D of question number eight, which is the last part of the last question of this paper. I hope that was clear. Um, other questions from this paper can be found. And as I mentioned, we could have also done the same thing with this in terms of taking the equation of the curve make y the subject square that what we have right so it would be 15 minus 3x over 5 all squared pi times the integral of that with respect to x but that's going to i think be a lot more difficult than just using the fact that this is going to be a cone when you rotate it round and use the volume of a cone which you should know all right so anyway um, other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here including the question part a to c of this you can also um, find other questions dealing with volumes of revolution from um, P4. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And the video here will tell you how to find the index kind of documents which helps you to navigate my channel um, efficiently. Thank you for watching and see you soon.